Hello, everyone. So second round is today, and I thought I would, you know, go over some offensive tackles that they could potentially double down on from taking Garrett Bradbury last night when it comes to this line thing. I know some people might think we don't need to, but I think we do need, like, mainly just a tackle to develop behind O'Neal and Reef because we don't really know how much longer Reef is really in the plans. If their real plan is, oh, no, we're just going to take him, O'Neal, from the right to the left when O'Neal, well, when uh, Reef needs to go, and then we need to find a right tack. We don't really know how that's going to shape out still. And I think this could be a pretty good year to do this now as opposed to just waiting till we, <laughs> till Reef is gone. So I have three second-round options and two third-round ones that – either I like or I think is more likely or among the guys that are more likely to happen, one of the two. Uh, Jawan Taylor is first. If he's a, either able to fall all the way down to 50 or maybe they even you know talk about trading up for him. So he is a massive tackle. He's 6'5", 312 pounds. He has shown – Flashes of a potential Pro Bowl caliber kind of guy. And he does need to work on his hands. He kind of does a little bit more clapping instead of punching, which isn't great. And they are heavy and violent, though, when they do punch. It's just you got to get that fixed up and consistent. And he also needs to kind of bend his legs more in terms of just his leverage is really off because he kind of plays with straight legs as opposed to bending them. He doesn't really have great leverage, but he's still able to kind of move people. He's kind of a mauler still in the run game. And he does have an anchor in pass protection, but the things that go against him for coming into Minnesota would be, one, we don't know if he'd be there at 50, so you might have to give stuff up. Two, isn't necessarily a pure scheme fit. Like he could definitely survive in it. Don't get me wrong. He is athletic enough to do it. Just he probably isn't that pure scheme fit you're looking for. And he does have knee back and a weight concern that are scaring teams away, which is why he's available now, as opposed to being that top 10 pick he might've had. And obviously that comes with a ton of upside. Just, are you willing to kind of, you know, risk it for the biscuit? But the second one I have here is one that we all know and love, Dalton Reisner out of Kansas State. So he's a much safer option <laughs> than Jawan Taylor. And he does have some questionable feet at times, but he is kind of solid just across the board. He's an effective space blocker. He has good power throughout his entire frame and is kind of a people mover in the run game and has played all across the line while in college he's played center he's played guard he's played tackle he can kind of play anywhere but in pass pro his feet need a lot of work mostly just the fact that his kick slide isn't getting enough depth or width but that's really the only issue with reisner i would say and maybe he isn't like a you know, he's not that five-star athlete kind of guy where he just has so much athletic ability, kind of falls closer to the to the mean a little bit. And that's probably why he's still available. It's like he's solid, but he's not, you know, he's not like tremendously great. He's not going to be your world-changing guy, but he will be a good starter. That's at least how I view him. And that might be why he's still available now, just because you see other guys with more potential, more, you know, higher ceiling kind of guy. Maybe you take them over the safe option. One of those fun little conversations. Uh, Yadni Kajust or Kajust, I have heard this both ways. Still unsure which way to say this. Also 6'5", 312 pounds. All three of these guys were listed at the, at the combine. And Yadni has, he has power movement skills that make him a very intriguing prospect. <clears throat> However, highly inconsistent pretty much everywhere. He will occasionally lean too far forward and will kind of get his hands too wide in pass protection. He does have really good play strength, which is kind of a benefit to him because, once again, movement plus play strength doesn't always go together. And does have a great hit rate when blocking in space. Although, a 
little interesting because his body control could definitely improve. Kind of looks a little, little suspect when he's moving around there, but then all of a sudden he hits his guy, so it works. So you could kind of withstand to you know improve that a bit. And he does have a lot of tools to work with, but I think you need to develop him a little bit more. Because, like, once again, you I think you need to, in the NFL, you probably need to improve that body control for him to hit as much as he did in college when it comes to blocking in space. And as far as Minnesota is concerned, blocking in space is essentially run blocking because of this Kubiak system coming in. So run blocking can be a little bit of a problem, and he and pass protection, like I said, will get his hands a little too wide, and that could also be a problem there. So I don't think he'd be a starter. They won. This would be the easiest option of these three for the second round to kind of just bench behind Reef and O'Neal because I think we all kind of like Reisner somewhere. You would think, oh, he can definitely play somewhere. Like, he's one of those guys. Jawan Taylor is just so talented that it would be hard to keep that on the sideline. So... In terms of benching and waiting, Yadney is probably the easiest one to do it with. And for my two third round guys, I have one that I like a lot. I, I think I'm higher on this guy than most people are. I might be willing to throw him into that second round range personally. And that is Bobby Evans out of Oklahoma. I, I like him quite a bit. He has a lot of power to his game. Although, once again, like Jawan Taylor, he could use a lot of knee bending help in the run game just to optimize his leverage and kind of maximize it to the full extent. And in pass pro, very, very active hands. And that's kind of what you love about him. And kind of knows how to vary his strikes. But pass sets need to improve as he kind of has kind of a similar issue to Reisner where it just doesn't get the proper depth or width sometimes. And you kind of need to fix that up. And he's a very, I think he's an easy mover in space. I know, obviously, like, 40 time wasn't that great for him, I don't think. But, or those kind of things. But when you watch him, you can see him move very quickly for a man of his size, which he is a tad shorter than the other ones. He's 6'4", but also 312 pounds. But he, he, he has kind of a leaner build and more on the athletic side. And... When I say easy mover in space, that makes him very effective on those trap blocks or when he's asked to pull for screens, things like that. Kind of those longer kind of pulls that you do ask tackles to do, which is kind of helpful for our kind of thing. Um, although he does have a tendency to overshoot targets sometimes in space, which is a problem because, like I said, blocking in space might be you know the most important thing to our run blocking as long as Kubiak's here. And I do think he is scheme versatile. I think he can be in a power gap or, you know, a, a zone kind of scheme, whether that's inside or outside. I do think he can kind of fit everything a little bit, and he has played both left and right tackle, meaning if they view O'Neal as their left tackle, that's okay because you can develop him as your right tackle and still just move him over and you have a guy at right tackle. If you like O'Neal at right tackle, you could tr try to develop Bobby here as your left tackle, and everything is just fine as well. So that's kind of nice, kind of a similar aspect as you would have with Reisner, although Reisner is kind of like he's played center, he's played guard, he's played tackle, so it's kind of like if one guy fails, you could just plug him in, or obviously injuries happen, things like that. And my last one here, I, I personally, not a big fan of this guy, but I, it only takes one team to really fall in love with athleticism to do it, and that is Greg Little out of Ole Miss. 6'5", 310 pounds, has a lot of natural power to him. You can kind of see that when you do watch him. However, play straight up and down really hurts him in the power sense, and mostly in the run game as you know, most, most of the down and drive blocks in that will kind of just be – at a stallmate because of his leverage is so bad. So that could get better. And in pass pro, I think he has a good anchor, but for the way he's built and just his frame, you are kind of disappointed in it, but it's still a good anchor. And he does have some really good foot speed. He's kind of able to beat some edge rushers to their spot before he gets there. And 
The other thing he's really good at is kind of just rounding out the pocket. Like if they do over pursue a little bit, he's going to push them out. But the reason why he's very good at that could potentially be he's always playing the outside, leaving the B gap vulnerable. So when they do take the outside, it's easier for him to do that. And that's not good. I think the lack of body control and leverage also make him very inconsistent in space as he is. Like, it seems like the further away from the line he is, the worse he gets. But I feel like if you were able to fix the leverage problem, he becomes a much, much better player. So physically, very, very talented and gifted. Needs to learn how to play the game, though, which is kind of a tough ask for our guys to teach him, given the fact that we haven't seen too much development happen along this offensive line. So I don't know if giving them a project like Greg Little is a good idea, but you'd see. Um, I think Greg Little could go a little higher, though, than some people think, just because, like I said, it only takes one team to fall in love with the athleticism, which is very easy to do with Greg Little, especially if you're in the third round, in that mid to back end of the third. So, and I would like to say, keep in mind, we could potentially see a Trey Waynes or Kyle Rudolph trade today, potentially. Not sure how likely, but they do need to free up cap space to actually pay their players that they get through the draft. And currently, they can't do that. So this is the easiest way to free up a pretty large sum of money. And I don't know. We might see something on those fronts. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this. If we should even double down, I think we probably should because... Once again, I think this line has been in shambles for so long, we should just try to achieve here. <laughs> but let me know if there is a guy I should have listed that you are mad that I didn't, or any thoughts on any of these guys, which ones are like, nah, you shouldn't even include that one, man, that one's bad, that one's bad, keep them away. Or, you know, agree, disagree, comments are nice. Anyway, till next time, I bid y'all adieu.